الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد ولا علیہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد Continuing on with our study of Usulul Thalatha, the three fundamentals, and this will probably be the last lesson, so we'll try to be as brief, but bring some benefits, so that way we hopefully have ob obtained some benefit from the study of this treatise, bi'idnillah. The last thing we were talking about was hijra, and hijra is leaving as a Sharia term, Hijrah is leaving the land of kufr or disbelief to go to the land of belief. From the land of shirk to the land of tawheed. From the land of kufr to the land of iman. From the land of bid'ah to the land of sunnah. So this is what Hijrah means. So Hijrah, it denotes leaving a place where it's difficult to practice your religion to a place where it's easier to practice your religion. And also the Prophet Sallallahu mentioned in a hadith about hijra also being hijra from leaving munkar, from leaving sin. That the person, that this is a muhajir as well, the one who leaves his or her sins. They leave off looking at the haram. They leave off drinking the haram. They leave off smoking the haram. They leave off doing the haram. So they leave that to come to what? To stronger iman. So with that being said also, that a person can make, and that's why I mentioned it in those various uh, various types of hijrah, that a person can sometimes leave one, land, uh, one place, maybe they're in a place like America, for example, which is a non-Muslim country. And maybe they don't have the ability to go to a Muslim country or whatever, but maybe they leave from one locality, one city, to a, a, another city which they can practice their religion better. So that's also a type of hijrah, that they have left a place where it was difficult to practice their religion and now it is easier. Maybe they were in a place where they're the only Muslim or one of the only, the, a, a small community which is very weak to go to a place where there are lots of Muslims and there's halal shops and there's uh, all kind of uh, signs, other signs of Islam. We already mentioned the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned inna ladina tuwafahum wa malaika that uh, verily when the angels uh, take their souls they will be asked in, in what state were you they will reply we were weak and oppressed in the land they will say was not the earth of Allah spacious enough for you to move yourselves away uh, and to the rest of the ayat so we already uh, spoke about that Imam uh, Baghawi said about the following ayat in another ayat the Shaykh uh, mentioned, he said, he mentioned the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibad, ya ibad al-ladheena amanu inna ardi wasiyatin fi iyaya fa'budun. O my slaves who believe, truly spacious is my earth, therefore worship me. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is commanding us, letting us know that the earth is spacious. So there's no reason why you should remain bi'idhnillah in a place where you can't practice your religion. You should go to the place where it's going to be more comfortable for you to wear hijab for the women. And where it's going to be more comfortable for you as a man to wear your beard and have your clothing short and practice uh, your Islam without being harmed bi'idhnillah. So... With regards to the verse that we mentioned where Allah says, O oh, my slaves who believe, truly spacious is my earth, therefore worship me alone. Imam Baghui, rahimahullah ta'ala, one of the Mufassireen, one of the ones who explained the Qur'an, he said the reason behind the revelation of this verse was the Muslims of Mecca who did not immigrate, whom Allah the Almighty called by the name of believers. So uh, the Imam used this to show that even though they didn't immigrate, they didn't migrate, they were still referred to as uh, believers. They were still from Ahli Iman. They were still uh, believers in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but they 
had, because they did not uh, migrate, then this was a sinful thing because they should have migrated to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because the Muslims were very few in number at that time. Immigration or hijrah is demonstrated by the Prophet Wasallam saying, and we mentioned this hadith, لا تنكتع الحجرة حتى تنكتع التوبة ولا تنكتع التوبة حتى تطلع الشمس من مغربها رواه أبو داود Immigration will not cease until repentance ends. And repentance will not end until the sun rises from the west. The sun rises from the east now. So, when one of the signs of the day of judgment is that the sun will rise of the west. When that comes, then it's too late for hijra. When that comes, it's too late for toba, meaning that someone's doing sins, it'll be too late for them. That's a, one of the major signs of the day of judgment, that judgment day is near. When the Prophet ﷺ settled down in Medina, he instructed the Muslims about the rest of Islamic laws. The Sharia, like zakat, fasting, pilgrimage, call to prayer, the adhan, uh, jihad, fi sabilillah, the command to do good and prohibit the ibo, emr bi maruf and nahi munkar, and many other Islamic laws. This period was of 10 years, meaning the Prophet ﷺ just called to tawheed for 10 years in Mecca. Then he made the hijra. Then the Prophet ﷺ died. Uh, sorry, this this period that we're talking about was a period of ten years. Then the Prophet ﷺ died, but his religion is or remains. Of course, we still practice Islam, and we're still ordered to do the commandments and follow the commandments of Islam. Then the Sheikh said, in his religion, the Prophet ﷺ did not leave any good but showed us its way, nor any bad but warned us against it. So everything good, the Prophet ﷺ showed us. That's why there's no, what the Prophet ﷺ said, Kullu bid'atin dalala. There's, uh, uh, all innovation is misguidance. Why? Because when you innovate in the religion, if you say, I want to pray five rakats instead of four, because it sounds good. It sounds like you're doing more ibadah. You are doing more ibadah. But now you're innovating in the religion because the Prophet ﷺ taught us only four and showed us that that is the hukum. And to leave that hukum is bid'ah because it's ibadah. We don't innovate in ibadah. We don't change our ibadah. Yes, our technology changes. We have the laptop, we have the computer, we have the, you know, uh, these well, nice printed books. We have the ACs. We have all these, this technology. That's okay. That's not bid'ah. That's a linguistic bid'ah. That's bid'ah in technology and so forth. But bid'ah, when we say kulu bid'ah tin dalala, that all bid'ah or innovation is in the fire, we're talking about religious innovation in ibadah. We're talking about ibadah, worship. There's no new worship because then if you were to say, well, you know, I don't want to fast Ramadan. I think I'll fast uh, the month of February on the Christian calendar. I'll fast that whole month instead or with Ramadan. I'm going to fast every February. Fasting is something ibadah. That's something good. But if we change the way the, that uh, it was legislated, and now you've almost made it a legislation upon yourself that you're going to fast every February. That means you're doing something the Prophet ﷺ did, and it is if you're saying that the Prophet ﷺ did not come with the complete deen or did not know this extra fada'il, uh, these extra a'mal and these extra good deeds. So this is the one who does this, فَكَدْ زَعَمَ أَنَّ Muhammad Khan فِي رسالة. The one who does this, as I believe it was Imam Malik said, the one who innovates in this, it is if they say, that the Prophet ﷺ cheated with delivering the message, that he had shortcomings. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ And the person who says this, this is kufr. They have committed kufr, disbelief, and have left the fold of Islam. So this is why it's very important to know that the religion is complete. اليوم أكملت لكم دينكم as is the ayat that we're about to mention. So the Imam, he then said, uh, that the message of Islam was for all people. The Prophet's instructions is an obligation to all jinn and humans. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, Kul ya nas inni rasulullahi ilaykum jami'an. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Say, O Muhammad, 
O mankind, indeed I'm the messenger of Allah to you all. That's in the Quran. Surah Al-A'raf. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala perfected the religion. That's why we don't need any new types of worship. Because Allah completed the deen. We have what is sufficient for us to get to Jannah. We have the blueprint for Jannah, which is the Sharia, which is practicing the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in accordance with the understanding of the Sahaba. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala completed his religion. Uh, and this is demonstrated by Allah saying, Al-Yawm akmalta lakum deenukum wa tmamtu alaykum ni'mati wa radaytu lakum islama deena. This day I perfected your religion for you, completed my favor upon you, and have chosen for you Islam as your religion. So Allah is what? He has perfected the religion. Islam is perfect. It's complete. Completed my favor upon you. The ni'mah, the favor is completed for you. That this way, the Quran and the Sunnah is complete. It's a perfect path. It's already there and it's a ni'mah for you, for your life in this life as well as the hereafter. And chosen for you, Islam is your religion. Letting us know that we can't be Buddhist. We can't be Hindus. We can't be Christians. We can't be Jews. We can't be like some people who say, oh, I'm Muslim Catholic. Some people say, oh, I'm Shia. This is not permissible in Islam, nor is it accepted. It's not accepted by Allah. And those people who say Shia, if they are Shia, like the predominant sect in Iran and many other places, the Ithna Ashariya, the Twelvers they call them, that means they believe in 12 Imams, and they believe that these imams are all descendants of the Prophet Sallallahu and they believe that those imams are infallible, meaning those imams are perfect. Those imams make no sin. This is what they believe. As Muslims, we don't believe that. We believe, as the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, "Kullu ibn Adam khata wa khayra khata ina tawabun." All the children of Adam make sins, and the best of those who sin is those who repent. So we all make mistakes. We all sin. But Allah loves when we repent. So this is what we believe. Even about our scholars, we love the scholars. They're the best of us. We love them. But they make mistakes in their hukum, ahkam, and their fatawa sometimes. They make sin too. But generally, bi'idnillah, they don't make the major sins, generally. You know? Unless one falls into ghibah or one falls into this sin. But for the most part, we say that they're some of the best, uh, best of the people. Especially if they're practicing scholars. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the, uh, what's the ayat? In the yakhsha ibadi ulama. I've forgotten the ayat, but anyway, the most God fearing uh, of my servants is the ulama. Who knows the ayat? Huh? Hmm. You don't know this ayat? Allah understand. Taib. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verily the most God fearing amongst my servants is the ulama. Meaning what? That because they have knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Uh, the son of the Prophet ﷺ, they follow it, they have knowledge of it, they practice that knowledge, as we said in the beginning of the book, and they call to that knowledge, and they're patient upon that knowledge, they're the best because from that practice, when you're reading in your practice, if you're just reading these books, and memorizing these books, that's not enough. Maybe you don't practice. There are some ulama, they don't practice. Or there are some people who, yantasabil al-ilm, that they are associated with being people of knowledge, associated with being a talib al-ilm, but they don't practice. Some they smoke weed. Some they drink alcohol. Some they do zina. Wa'iyadhan billah. Some people do all, do all kinds of sins. Or they just don't even do their wajib. They don't pray like they should. But the ones who practice, read and practice, study and practice, memorize and practice, 
and preach it, showing the people, calling the people and our patient. Those are the ones who fear Allah the most because they know the hukum and they know Allah sees them. As we talked about Ihsan before, we said that uh, as the Prophet Sallallahu said, in Ta'budullah ka'annaka yarak, fa'in lam tukun tarahu fa'innuhu yarak. It is the worship of Allah ka'annaka tara, fa'in lam tukun tarahu fa'innuhu yarak. It is the worship of Allah as if, uh, as if you see Him. But because you can't see Him, know that He sees you. This person who really believes that, they're not going to look at the haram and they're not going to do the haram. They're going to watch what they say because they're going to be scared. They're going to know, subhanAllah, Allah is watching me right now. No one else can see me. I'm in the dark. I'm in the depths of the night hiding with my sin. But Allah sees you and they know that so they don't do it. That's the ones who really fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Those are the characteristics of the ulama. Those people who have knowledge and practice. The Prophet Sallallahu death is confirmed by Allah saying, so we know the Prophet Sallallahu died, alayhi salatu wasalam. Innaka maytun wa innuhum maytun. Thumma innukum yawm al-qiyamati inda rabbikum takhtasimun. Indeed you are to die, and indeed they are to die. Then indeed, you on the day of resurrection before your Lord will have your disputes. You'll have your quarrels and your and get your rectification. Get your uh, your you know get your hawk. People will be resurrected after being dead. This is demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, letting us know that we all die and, and there is a day, day of judgment called Yom al Qiyamah, which we refer to it. Minha khalaqanakum wa fiha nu'idukum wa minha nukhrijukum taratan ukhra. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, From the earth did we create you, and into it shall we return you, and from it shall we bring you out once again, letting us know that we came from the earth and will die and will be buried back in the earth. And then we'll be resurrected again before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment. And this is also demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, Wallahu anbatukum min al-ardi nabata thumma yu'idukum fiha wa yukhrijukum ikhraja. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and Allah has caused you to grow from the earth. Then he will return you into it and extract you another, another time. So we'll, be die, we'll all die and we'll be returned to the earth in which we came and then we will be resurrected again. After death, people will be called to account and requite to their past deeds. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, so however we lived in this life, we will have to uh, uh, be held accountable for the way we lived in this life. وَلِلَّهِ مَا فِي السَّمَوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ لِيُجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسَاءُوا بِمَا عَمِلُوا وَيُخْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى وَيُجْزِيَ وَيُجْزِيَ الَّذِينَ أَحْسَنُوا بِالْحُسْنَى Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to Allah belongs all that is in the heavens and earth, so that He rewards those who do evil according to their deeds, and He rewards those who do good with what is best. Who denies resurrection becomes a disbeliever in Allah. So the person who denies resurrection said, no, we're not going to be brought forth on Yom al This person is a kafir. That's disbelief. That is disbelief in Islam because we have so much of the Quran which verifies this. So much of the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ which shows us. That means they are lying and denying the Quran and the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And Allah said about people who said this because in the time of the Prophet sallallahu some of the pagans said this. Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "Zama al-ladina kafaru in lam yubathu kul bala wa rabbi la tubathun thum la tanabun bima amaltum wa dalik ala Allah yasir." Allah subhanahu wa taala says, "The unbelievers think that they will not be raised up for the day of judgment. Say, O Muhammad, yes, by my God, you shall surely be raised up. Then shall you be told the truth of all that you did, and that is easy for Allah." Subhanallah, and this is a sifat, this is a characteristic of so many pagans, well, all pagans, and all those uh, 
people similar to them who don't even believe in a day of judgment. The Christians believe in a day of judgment. They believe in a Yom Kiyama. The Jews also believe in a day of judgment. But many other communities, especially if they don't believe in some sort of concept of, of who Allah is, of God, then they don't even believe that they'll be held accountable. They just believe they live in this life. For example, I watch a particular individual on the YouTube who's a bodybuilder. He just bought a new house. He's got all this wealth. He tells us, you never hear him once say, praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or thank Allah for the things he has. He has many cars, nice cars. He was talking about how he got robbed in his house several times and it doesn't bother him. Because he said he has so much money, it really didn't bother him. It didn't fade him. But he didn't say Alhamdulillah. He didn't thank Allah. So he doesn't even believe. He just believes that he has this life. He's got a lot of weight. Who knows how he's going to die? And, and that's it. They just believe they live and die. Live fast, die young. That's the uh, motto that many people in this world have. They just think, I'm going to live and do anything and everything I want to do. I'm excited. I want to do everything. I want to have many girlfriends. I want to have all the money. I want to have riba, haram, this, this. I want to try that. Oh, that's a new drug that'll get you high this way. I'll do that one. Oh, this one will make you feel like you're floating upside down. I want to try that one. Oh, this one makes me feel that I'm so strong and I can pick up a car. I think I'll try that drug too. They just live only for this life and only for their, their feelings. Oh, I think I want to eat that. I don't care what it is. Halal, haram, I'll just eat everything. They just live for their desires. And there's a statement they say, do you want to eat to live or live, huh? Eat to live or live to eat? No. Something like this. Which meaning that some people, they, the one who eats to live, they eat, they eat what is sufficient for them. This is the case of the mu'min. The mu'min eats what is sufficient for them to sustain their life so they can continue to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because Allah commands us to be uh, to eat of the tayyibat, to eat of the good things. So this is the mu'min. The other person is the one who eats just to eat. They live to eat. Meaning all they do is they live to indulge and eat and, and try everything new. That's all they care about. That's a difference. But we believe in the day of judgment and we believe that we'll be held accountable for what we did in this life. Allah the Almighty sent all messengers as warners. All the messengers were sent as warners. And this is demonstrated in the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رُسُولٌ مُبَشِّرِينَ وَمُنذِرِينَ لَا إِلَّا يَكُونَ لِلنَّاسِ عَلَى اللَّهِ حُجَّةً Messengers who gave good news as well as warnings. So that mankind after the coming of the messengers should not have any plea against Allah. Meaning the proof has been established against us because we had messengers. عَلَيْهِمْ أَفْتَوْ صَلَاةُ وَسَلَامُ And they all called to Tawheed. They all talk, came with a message to tell us about Tawheed and warn us from shirk. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And we sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things. Worship besides Allah. The Tagut. What is the Tagut, Rashad? It's those things worship besides Allah. So pay attention and listen to this last bit. The first messenger of Allah was Nur alayhi salatu wasalam, and that and the last was Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is demonstrated in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, we've sent you an inspiration as we sent it to Nur and the messengers after him. A messenger was sent to each nation, beginning with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, and ending with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, commanding people to worship Allah alone and restraining them from polytheism. This is demonstrated by Allah saying, and this is the verse we just mentioned, For surely we sent every, uh, amongst every people a messenger to worship Allah and avoid Tagut. The messengers, all of them, they had the same message as far as Tawheed. Worship Allah alone. Don't worship me. Don't worship Isa. Don't worship Nur. Don't worship Ibrahim. Don't worship uh, Ishaq. Don't worship any of the Anbiya. Alayhim after salatu wasalam. Worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Don't worship Jesus alayhi salatu wasalam. And don't worship anything else, anything that could be uh, considered Tawgut. Don't worship false gods. Don't worship the book. Don't worship the rock. Don't worship the tree. Don't worship the elephant. Don't worship the cow. Don't worship rats. 
So Allah imposed upon all people to disbelieve in idols and to have faith in Allah alone. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, <clears throat> An idol is a slave crossing the limits as being worshipped, followed, or blindly obeyed. There are many idols, but these five are the heads of them. So these are the five heads. These are the five types of idols that people fall into. They call them tagut in uh, in Arabic or tawagit. The first one is the shaitan who is cursed by Allah. So some people worship the shaitan, and and they have satanic churches in America, probably in Europe. And also in uh, probably in Canada and all over, even in T dot, they probably got some satanic churches. So the shaitan, the Satan, is cursed by Allah. The second tagut is any entity worshipped while approving this deed, meaning anyone who's happy that the people worship him. Some people they don't directly worship, and I think we hear a lot about this about Kanye West. The rapper, he's always talking about, you know, praising himself. And people like this, they want to be worshipped. Even in their songs and their music sometimes, they say, worship me or look to me or I'm this, I'm that. I'm, they praise themselves so much, they want the people to worship and be ecstatic about them. So they had their jinnah, their paradise is in this life, is in this dunya. But in the hereafter, they'll be of the khasirin. So any, any entity, anything that is happy to be worshipped is a tagut, other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one worthy of worship. Thalatha, the, the third uh, tagut, who calls people to worship himself instead of Allah. And there's many yogi instructors, instructors who do yoga, uh, these... Uh, you know, these Hindus and, and others, guys or self-help guys in the West and around the world, yogi masters and what have you. Some of those guys, they, they want the people to worship them, to come kiss their hand, to kiss their feet, to bow before them, to give them whatever they want in the dunya. Because they are happy and pleased with the people taking their worship from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and giving it to them. This is the utmost kufr, the utmost shirk, and the utmost tughyan and ma'asi. This is the worst of sin and transgression. The fourth, who claims the knowledge of the unseen or divine secrets. Some people, they say their sheikh knows the unseen. Some people say their sheikh, he, he's living in Seattle, for example, or he's living in... Afghanistan, some village. And they say, no, he's in, he's in Hajj. He went to Mecca last night. He told us. And we believe him. Oh, he, he went to the moon yesterday. He just prayed there. Oh, he prayed in the Kaaba yesterday. So this is why we give him gifts. This is why we give him wealth. This is why we give him women. This is why we give him this. Because he doesn't have sin. They believe this. This is a type of ibadah. It's gotten to that. Because these people are committing kufr who believe this. And the people who himself practices this and wants the people to believe this is also a disbeliever who claims the knowledge of the unseen or divine secrets. If they claim the knowledge of the unseen, those people, those um, who have the crystal balls and fortune tellers, kufr al-akbar, makhraj al millah, makhraj min al millah, these people, they have left the fold of Islam with this evil because they claim to know the unseen. Sometimes they may know some little secrets of the unseen that they got from the jinn. And that's kufr. And it's shirk. And it's a great evil that deceives people. The fifth, and who rules by other than what Allah has revealed, the Islamic law. So when someone believes that they have a law better than Allah's law, or that their law is equal to Allah's law, or they are pleased with the false law, and they uh, don't want to rule by Allah's law at all, then this takes a, pole, a person out of the fold of Islam. And when they make the halal haram and the haram halal, this is also ruling by other than what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed. And especially when they do it knowingly. And this is demonstrated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saying, La ikraha fid-deen qad min al 
فمن يكفر بالطاغوت ويؤمن بالله فقد استمسك بالعروة الوثقى لا انفسام لها والله سميع عليم Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Let there be no compulsion in religion. Truth stands out clear from error. Whoever rejects a tagut and believes in Allah has grasped the most trustworthy handhold that never breaks. And Allah is the all hearer and all knower. So that's the most trustworthy handhold, holding on to the Quran, holding on to the Sunnah, holding on to Tawheed, holding on to the madhab of the Salaf of this Ummah. And this is the meaning of La ilaha illallah. I bear witness that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah and that Muhammad وسلم, is his last messenger. And in the hadith, Ras al Islam, uh, Ras al Amr al Islam, wa umudihi salat, wa dhurwa ta sanamihi jihad fi sabilillah. And this is the last hadith, the last statement the Shaykh ended this treatise with. He said, The head of this matter is Islam. The, the Prophet وسلم, said this in Ruah uh, Tirmidhi. The head of this matter is Islam. Prayer is the pillar, its pillar. And jihad is the peak of its, uh, the highest point. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabi Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. And thus ends our study of Asulul Thalatha.